That's good. It's, it's, it's good to sing. You know, it's good to worship. Because we're so, we're so stressed. That was, you guys get thumbs up, both of you, all of you. Oh, there's more than two. What are you, what are you sneaking up behind me? Go away. Trying to, I don't trust her. I mean, I, I trust her over there. Um, but we, 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 it, is, it is good to, to just take some time just to worship and, and just to, to, to abandon everything else that's going on around us and just focus in on praising God. Because we are in the middle, we are in the thick of it. It is Christmas time from the end of November to, to January 2nd, 40 days of stress. Who's coming back out here? What's going on? I am so nervous. I saw your, Connie, thank you. You were like, oh, who's on the stage? And I, hi, Sandy. Okay. It's always it's a pleasure right. here. Randy's lonely. He's right there. <laughs> but we're in the middle of it. It's, it's, it's Christmas season. And uh, how many of you, raise your hand, you got your Christmas trees up? Who's got the Christmas tree up? All right, now, I'm not going to say who doesn't have their Christmas tree up, Scrooge, but I'm just going to say, let's, it, it's Christmas time, and so we've got so much stuff to do, we've got 40 days, well, actually, we only got a couple days, because Christmas is coming up, and so we've got, we got so much stuff that we have to do, we have to... We have to buy the right gift with the money that we don't have for the person we don't like from the store that doesn't have it and give it to them whenever we don't want to see them. So, so we've got to get the stuff, right? And then we've got to clean and decorate and clean the outside and decorate the outside and clean the inside and decorate the inside and cook and host and visit and cook and host and visit and make sure it's 50%. Your family, my family, big day, little day, good attitude, good attitude, clean, decorate, visit, host. And all the while that you're doing this, you are fighting and restraining the urge of fight or flight. Do I stand up and start screaming or do I just keep eating fruitcake until I become nauseous and start vomiting and have to go home? I'm sorry, I gotta leave. So we've got the, the shopping, the visiting. What do we wear? I mean, is this a semi-formal or is this an ugly Christmas sweater party? Is that sweater my grandma got me, is that technically an ugly Christmas sweater or does she know the difference? Like, what do I wear? And, and of all the things that stress us out at Christmas time, this phrase right here, I brought my tripod, everyone in the living room, family picture time. You, the blood drains from everyone's face. Stop crying, it's picture time. And oh, it's just so stressful. And we're running about going crazy. Everyone ready? Breathe deeply. One breath in. Do it again. Repeat after me. But in your hearts, <clears throat> okay, we'll try that again. Ready? Repeat after me. But in your hearts, in your hearts revere, Christ revere Christ as Lord. 1 Peter 3.15, Christ is our focus. It's not about the stress. It's not about the stuff. It's not about balancing family time and making sure everybody's happy. It's about, it's about Christ. Let's pray. God, this is, this is the, the time of the year where we celebrate your son. We don't celebrate shopping. We don't celebrate stress. We don't celebrate Christmas sweaters. We celebrate your son, the Prince of Peace. And I pray that we can remember that and stay focused on him. We love you, Lord. Amen. So is it the Prince of Peace or is it stress? Luke chapter 2. Grab your Bibles. We're going to go to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And as you're going there in your Bibles, this, this is in our, our series of keeping Christ as the focus of our life. 1 Peter 3.15, in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Keep Christ at the center of your life all year round, but especially in this time of Christmas. We're going to go to Luke chapter 2. And as I was preparing for this sermon, I was, I was really, I was tracking with Mary and Martha because I love the story of Mary and Martha. And if you're familiar with the story, Martha is stressed out. She's going crazy, getting the house all ready, and Mary's just chilling and focusing on Jesus. Stress versus focusing on the Prince of Peace. But as I was reading through the, the Luke 2 story, the, the great classic Christmas story, there are so many people who deal so well with stress and great opportunities for us to learn. So if you want to read the Mary Martha one, that's great. Do that on your own time. It's a great story, Luke chapter 10. We're going to focus on Luke chapter 2 today. But <coughs> I coughed the wrong way. I went.
category of a strike. Bethlehem, and let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Whenever you see angels, that's usually a stress-inducing situation because typically angels come to, to kill you, and so let alone one, you've got a, a company of them uh, proclaiming this message in the middle of the night. This is a stress-inducing situation, but the shepherds, they, they handle it very well. Verse 16, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told, uh, what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned praising, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Is he the prince of peace? Or are we focused on stress in this time and our in our lives. Is this 40 days, this intense period where we're focusing on Christ, on Christmas, is it about Jesus? Or is it about all the stuff we have to do, the parties we have to attend, the little things that come up and distract us and bring in the stress in our lives? As we look at this story, I see Mary and Joseph, the first ones that, that, that show up there. They're, they're, they're on a road trip. They're paying taxes. He's with a pregnant woman that technically it's not his. Um, and, and, they're, and they're far from home, and she gives birth. She gives birth in a, in a cattle stall, and it's, it's dirty, and, and, and here's their first baby, and they're by themselves, and mom and dad are nowhere to be found, and they're all alone, and it's okay. And, and it's okay. And so I wonder if, if we can watch what Mary and Joseph do we see at the end there where Mary's pondering up these things in her heart and she's, she's treasuring them up. She's thinking, this is good. I'm the Lord's servant. He's chosen me to do something incredibly important. Maybe this is not exactly how I planned it when I was a young Jewish girl thinking about what my marriage would be like and mom and dad would be there for the first child. And, but here they are, far from home, with their first child. And so as we look at the, the joy that they had and the... the the, the goodness that they had, I'm reminded that simplifying our life reduces stress. Mary and Joseph were totally okay. There's no room in the end. Well, we got a, we got a cattle stall. That's good enough. We'll use a manger. That's good enough. The best Christmas ever was brought to this world with the candles lit of Ode to Donkey. I mean, it was, it, was in a, it was in a stall. Think about it. Mary and Joseph, they got their, their first child 
And I wonder if the shepherds were there to, they, they, they were there. Did they hold Jesus? I mean, I don't know how you were. Like when we had Joseph, our first child, it wasn't like we just went passing him around to strange people. That's weird. But you're Mary and Joseph, and you're, you're in this cattle stall, and you have this baby, and, and you're all alone, and you're nervous, and you're scared, and you're wishing your parents were there, and random shepherds show up. Hi, we met some angels. We're here to see your son. Okay, that's cool. Maybe. And so the shepherds hold Jesus before grandma and grandpa do. And yet it's the best Christmas ever. Mary and Joseph are totally okay with this. They are content with what's going on because God is using them for something amazing. And so as we, as we come into the Christmas season and we're going crazy about getting everything organized and everything clean, we've got to clean the house, we've got to clean the house, we've got to clean the house. Practice this phrase. If Jesus was cool with the barn, so am I. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Somewhere between uh, uh, a lazy slob and neat freak, like like a, a good a middle ground. But but if Jesus was Jesus, he was cool with the barn. He comes into life in a, in a barn. But the first kid we've got, first day baby pictures, second day baby pictures, seventh day baby pictures, first month baby pictures, and we got just whoa, so much stuff for baby number one. And Jesus comes in with the most humblest of beginnings. No fanfare. He just sneaks into the world with some shepherd guests. So maybe we should simplify our life a little bit. Maybe we don't need all this stuff to make the holidays better. Mary, Joseph, Jesus, random people, messy house, best Christmas ever. And so maybe we, we reduce our stress by simplifying our life and remembering the important things. They had each other, and they were being obedient to God's will. They were focused on God and focused on each other. That, that, that's what we need, focusing on God, loving God, and loving each other. The important things. And, and, the, and the rest of the stuff, the, all the other details, well, just let them go. Focus on God and loving each other, simplifying our lives to reduce our stress, just like Mary and Joseph did. Look at the, um, as we see this story, and we see Jesus coming into it, I want to borrow that phrase that Isaiah used to describe Jesus, of calling him the Prince of Peace. Because Jesus is coming into the world, we see it in verse 14, look at it in verse 14. Jesus is coming into the world, and the angels are talking to the shepherds. And they see this, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The angels come and say, uh, peace is coming to you. Isaiah says, the prince of peace is coming to you. Jesus is referred to the prince of peace because he focuses on reconciling relationships. That's what he's here to do, to reconcile relationships, to restore broken relationships, to mend that which has been uh, torn apart, to restore them, to bring them back. And I see two ways that, there's more, but I see two that I want to talk about today, ways that Jesus reconciles relationships, that he brings back the peace, where there once was a good relationship, but because of a choice, there's tension, there's stress between that relationship. We go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1 and 2 and 3, where God creates the world and he makes it perfect, and he makes Adam and Eve his first son, his first daughter. He's really, I'd imagine, he's really excited about them. He loves them a whole bunch. He likes them. Uh, he's crazy about them. And he walks and talks with them and has a great relationship with them. And the relationship is good, is healthy, is perfect. And there's one rule. Don't eat from that tree. That, that's, that's the rule. Just don't eat. Don't do that. Okay? But they're tempted. And they fall into temptation. And God goes nuts. God goes crazy because they broke their diet plan. But, but, but think about it. They disobey him. They, they disobey. They willingly choose to, to reject God and to step outside of his path, his, his plan. And because of that, God has to punish them. Kicks them out of the garden, curses them, brings about death, suffering, pain. They just ruin the whole world and they're separated from God. And so the rest of the Bible is the story of God bringing man back to him, of reconciling people back to him. 
back into that right relationship, of bringing us back from our sinful ways back into that relationship with God. Because God is a holy, righteous God who can't be in the presence of sin. And so Adam and Eve, in their sin, their sinful choice to disobey God, yes, it was just eating fruit, but it was God told them not to do. So in order for them to be back into that right relationship, that sin had to be rolled back in the Old Testament. We're under the new covenant. So Jesus takes our sin away and puts us back into that right relationship with God. Romans chapter 5. Keep your finger here in Luke chapter 2. Go over a couple books to Romans chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 1. This idea of Jesus being this truth that Jesus is our Prince of Peace. And then he reconciles our relationship between us and God. Sinful, fallen us who separated ourselves, just like Adam and Eve were separated from God in the garden. We've separated ourselves from, with sin. Jesus reconciles us. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. He reconciled us back into that relationship. And so for some of you, maybe, maybe you're outside of, of that relationship. You've never been reconciled with God. You are you're living outside of grace. And, and you've never made that choice to be made that, that relationship right again. Please, be obedient to the gospel. Be obedient to the gospel message. When Jesus Christ tells us to accept him as our Lord and Savior, to follow him, to believe, to repent, to confess, and to be baptized, that's what we are called to do. And until we do that, we are estranged from God. That relationship is separated. And so Jesus is the Prince of Peace that renews that relationship. And I hear people say this frequently. I've talked with God. I've talked with God, and we're at peace. We're good. Uh, really, you, you talked with God and he told you that, that what you're doing right now is okay and is acceptable? Yeah, we talked and it's okay. And it, this happens with people who are, who are outside of God. We, we talked and it's okay. No, no, unless you are obedient to the gospel message, you are still estranged from Jesus Christ. Unless Christ's blood is applied to your life, you are outside of his favor. Well, well, we talked, and, and I, I, I believe, but, you know, the baptism thing, I, I'm not a big fan of that, so I'm going to skip over that. But, but God and I, we talked, and he said it's okay, and we're at peace together. If it disagrees with this, then it's not God speaking to you. I hear this all the time. I, I talked, I prayed with God, and, and we came to an agreement, like he's going to give me an exception. Like everybody else, this is required of them. This behavior is required of everybody else except for me. My lifestyle, it's okay. Everybody else is required to, to be baptized. But for me, God's gonna make an exception because we talked and, and, and we're cool. That voice that you're hearing, if it does not agree with Scripture, then it's not God's. It's, it's someone else's. Maybe it's the deceiver. I don't know who it is. But if it does not agree with God's word, then it's not God's voice. He cannot contradict his word. He is true. And so what he says is written in his word. This is absolutely correct. And so we are estranged from God when we live outside of his word. Be reconciled to, to God through his word by being obedient to the scriptures. That's what God wants. That's what his heart wants. God is, see, God is not pleased with, with man being outside of his will. God is not pleased with that. He, he doesn't want that. He didn't want to kick Adam and Eve out, but in his righteousness, he had to. I, I, we were talking about this in Gary's class, a little plug for Gary's Sunday school class, talking about the Old Testament. And I said, the Old Testament is great because it shows us a lot of who God is. Listen to this. Write this one down. Ezekiel thirty three eleven. It's one of those tricky books to find. So write it down. Look it up later. Ezekiel 33, 11 says this. God speaking. As surely as I live, declares uh, the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? 
God speaking. He is not satisfied with people being outside of his relationship. He's not satisfied with that. His righteous, holy character demands it that he casts you aside if you're still in sin. But his immense love for you sent his son Jesus to be born to live a sinless life, to reconcile you back to God. Jesus is that Prince of Peace that reconciles us back to God. Jesus is that Prince of Peace that reconciles the Jews and the Gentiles. Ephesians chapter two. If you're in Romans, it's a couple of pages to the right. First and second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter two. The Jews and the Gentiles, oh, they were neighbors, they were buddies. No, they weren't. They hated each other. Absolutely hated each other. You could say racial tensions were high. Ephesians chapter two, verse 14. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups that hated each other one and has destroyed the barrier dividing the wall of hostility. Ephesians chapter two, verse 15. By setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross. Again, that idea of reconciling us back to God, the Prince of Peace by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. That is, that is monumentally huge. When this first came out, I'm sure that made a lot of people mad. Jews and Gentiles, you're both same. You're both included on the plan. If Jesus can bring peace between a Jew and a Gentile, I think your in-laws can get along with your husband. I think it can work, all right? Whatever the race, you know. I always forget. In-laws, outlaws, everybody, just get together. If they can do it there, they can do it in your life. Colossians chapter three, we're in Ephesians. Go over to Colossians. A couple pages to the right. Colossians chapter three, verse 13. This idea of Jesus being the prince of peace, reconciling relationships with God and man, reconciling relationships between the Jews and the Gentiles. Colossians chapter three, verse 13. Jesus is our prince of peace. We don't need stress. We've got the Prince of Peace. Colossians chapter three, verse 13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance, if you got a problem with somebody against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. We have received unmerited favor. We have received grace. We have received forgiveness. The least we can do is turn around and forgive those. Maybe Christmas is a very stressful time for you because you have to see that family member that you can't stand. Maybe it's time that you fill your life with the Prince of Peace. I, I don't know the relationship. I don't know what happened. But maybe it's time that we work towards reconciliation among our fellow brother and sister. Jesus is the Prince of Peace and he's focused on reconciling relationships and so we follow that same path because in Luke chapter two, back to where we were, verse 14, the angel said, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Peace between God, peace between racial tension and peace between our fellow man. Look at verse 10. The angels have a lot of good stuff to say here. Uh, verse nine, the, the angels show up and the, the shepherds are terrified. They're absolutely scared. This is a traumatic event, causes stress. Verse 10, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Great joy rises above the circumstances and the situations in our life. Joy is above stress. I choose joy. My emotions might fluctuate some, but I choose to find joy in the situation. This might not be exactly how I wanted this to go but I choose to, to have joy. Uh, I enjoy building things. I was telling Galen because he's, uh, he's my carpenter buddy over there. I enjoy building things, and so I'm working on a little house project right now. And like all good house projects, I blow my time budget out the window. I just destroy that thing. Nowhere, this will take about an hour, three days. That's usually what it is, okay? I'm horrible at budgeting time because what happens is you, is you start working on the project and you open it up and you're like, oh, huh. I didn't expect to find that. And then you chisel that down and you're like, what do I do now? And then you cut that out and you go, okay, all right, now, now what do I do? And, and, you just, and so I'm sitting there scratching my head while the door is off of my house and all the hot air is pouring out and all the cold air is pouring in. I'm thinking, this is not going well. 
but I choose joy. I choose joy because I know that this is going to pass. I'll get this done. It'll be, it'll be done eventually. It'll be okay. Somebody tell my wife, this too shall pass. I'll get it done, okay? And we'll look back on it and we'll go, oh, remember when you couldn't change that door? Yes, I do. Thank you. And, and we'll laugh about it and it'll be okay. Because my joy, the joy that I find in Christ, rises above the situations, rises above what's going on around me. Mary and Joseph, um, wait, angel, you just told me I'm going to have a baby. Well, I'm not married. I, I don't have a husband. So how's that going to work, Joseph? Wait, my wife is pregnant. What's going on here? Like, this is not a good situation. But they choose to be obedient to God, and they choose joy in that situation. The shepherds, kind of scared about the angels, but it's Jesus, and he's going to bring great joy to people. Because we know regardless of what happens here, regardless of what happens at our second job, regardless of what happens in life, we are still saved. We still have a Savior in heaven who cares about each and every one of us. And, and so e even if the plan is not looking like what we intended, Mary and Joseph, is that what they planned? Not at all. But they trust God. And they have joy. They rise above the, the, the details, the, the stress, and they choose to have joy. And, they, and I wonder if we... If we chose joy because we knew that God was working in it and we trusted him and we trusted his plan, I wonder if we could, we could substitute some trust in our life to battle some stress. I'm stressed, I'm worried, how's this gonna work? How's this gonna work? Or, that's not what I intended, but God's with me. I, I had different plans in my life, radically different plans, but I'm going to trust that God is going to use this and do something in my life. I'm not going to get stressed. This is the single difficult, most challenging thing I've ever done in my life, but I'm not going to get stressed. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to choose joy, regardless of what's going on around me. I'm going to focus in on him. And this plan, it might take a long time. It might. But remember, Adam and Eve had to wait 4,000 years for Jesus to show up. So if they can wait 4,000 years, you can wait a couple months. The door will be done faster than a couple months. But nevertheless, waiting, trusting, trusting that God has a plan and that he's going to provide for us. Look at verse 10. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid to the shepherds. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Let's focus in on the shepherds here. Angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the one we've been waiting forever to come. This will be assigned to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger, a very humble beginning. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his Savior rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph. Now, what are they doing? They're keeping watch over sheep. Does it say anything about what they did with their sheep? I mean, did they do one, two, three, not it? Oh, you got to stay. Sorry, we're going to go check out the Jesus thing. You got to stay back. I mean, what did, what did they do? Or did they just take them all with them? I'm sure that was a really efficient way to travel in the middle of night with sheep. And then that compounds the stress that Mary and Joseph... Hi, we're random shepherds with 500 sheep. We're here to see Jesus. What, what was this like? Whatever it was like, their priority was focusing on Christ. Their priority was finding Jesus. Their priority was not dealing with their sheep boss the next day who's saying, what are you doing? Their priority was finding the Messiah. And so verse 15, when the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherd said, let's go. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. No stress, no worries. Pack it up, move on. And they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. They go and they find Jesus, and they tell everybody. Verse 20, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had seen, which they had uh, heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So the shepherds keep Christ as their priority and it reduces their stress. 
their focus is finding Jesus Christ. Not worrying about what their boss is going to say. Not worrying about what to do with all these sheep. Not worrying about that. It's find Christ. Let's go get him. Let's go, let's go find the baby. He's here. I'm not worried about any other details here. We're going to go find him. And when we find him, we're going to go tell everybody that we possibly know about him. Well, what if they don't believe you? We don't care. These guys are 100% convicted that Christ is here. They saw the angels. They're confident. And so they throw worry and they throw stress out the window and they find Christ and they tell others because Christ is their priority. And so here we are 2,000 years later. We don't have an angel choir singing, but we have this story. We have the true story of the birth of the Prince of Peace who came to reconcile our relationship with God, who came to bring about great joy into our lives, who came to remind us that we can, we can simplify our lives. If it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. And that we have this joy that Jesus Christ is here. And that joy rises above the stuff that's going on in our life. And so we don't, we don't stress. We trust that God has a plan. I've asked a friend to come on up here. Come on up, Sandy. I trust you because I can see you. And, and, and I want us just to, to, to close out the sermon part with a, um, just a Christmas carol. Bring that, that slide up. As, as you read through this, the whole thing is, is, is all is calm, all is bright. Ranyan virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. The little baby is just sleeping. But be reminded that Jesus Christ is our Prince of Peace. Let's, let's, everybody stand up. Let's, let's, let's sing this one. Let's sing this together. Silent night. Holy night. All is calm. we thank you we thank you that you sent your son the prince of peace to come to this world and to restore our relationship with you that's awesome that is the greatest thing ever and so we thank you for that in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen listen if you have never made that decision to follow Christ in your life then you are you're, you're, you're outside of that relationship with God, and that's not what he desires, and that's not what I desire. That's not what any church member here desires. We want you to know who Jesus Christ is. We want you to be reconciled back in that right relationship with God through our Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. If you wanna make that decision to follow him, come forward today as we sing our song of invitation.